Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Lizon from Lifestyle Integration, co-author of The Art of Being Healthy and author of The Speed Trap. And today I'm going to be speaking to you about a brand new 2016 study titled Turning on Lights to Stop Neurodegeneration, the Potential of Near-Infrared Light Therapy in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's Disease. I've struggled with this video because of the vast implications that this will have for so many people and I just want to get it right. So bear with me as I go through this review. It's a little bit lengthy, but bear with me so that you can make your own conclusions and determine exactly what actions you wish to take now to help either yourself or anyone that you know of that either has Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or is at risk of it. So what exactly is near-infrared? Near-infrared is part of the energy spectrum that's released from the sun. And the way I'd like you to think of infrared, near-infrared, for this video is almost like a nutrient. Let me give you an example. In 2016, another brand new study released this year, they discovered that near-infrared, when you're exposed to it in the early morning hours for a few hours, as humans were designed to do by living outside, that few hours of near-infrared in the morning had a protective factor equivalent to an SBF 15 sunscreen against the damaging ultraviolet rays that we get exposed to in the middle of the day. The study went on to show that if you then lingered in the sunlight in the evening when you were also exposed to the near-infrared, that that would then help to repair the ultraviolet damage that was done during the day. The point that I'm trying to make is that near-infrared is essentially a nutrient and nature knows best and we were designed to be in it. We seem to have this great fear of sunlight and we try to get ourselves removed from sunlight, but as we found out, we need the sun for certain aspects such as vitamin D production. So it was worth a minute to explain what near-infrared is. All right, let's get to the actual paper and clearly explain why I'm so excited about this research. As we know, neurodegeneration refers to the progressive death of neurons and the two most well-known examples are Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Over time, the symptoms get progressively worse, eventually making day-to-day -day routine activities difficult for patients. As the authors of the paper note, the current treatments for patients of both diseases offer at best symptomatic relief, particularly for Parkinson's, but do not provide neuroprotection or are not disease modifying, at least in humans. One of the reasons that there's so much scientific interest in near-infrared in the last few years is actually the lengthy list of conditions it appears to help with. Readers of our infrared sauna blogs will be familiar with some of the ranges of conditions, but the list extends to retinal disease, traumatic brain injury, optic nerve injury, experimentally induced stroke, familiar amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is ALS, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. What this has led us to believe is that these issues involve common pathways. This is a key aspect, common pathways, specifically of inflammation and oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, and neuronal death, indicating that near-infrared may be beneficial to both Parkinson's and Alzheimer's through, and this is the key, the same protective mechanisms. Now the near-infrared is proposed to work in two different ways and what you see on the screen here is the first way which is direct stimulation. It gets a bit technical so we'll stick with the conclusions which are stunning. The authors report that the main direct target of near-infrared appears to be cytochrome C oxidase. doesn't matter the name, but it's a key enzyme of the mitochondrial respiratory chain. This is where the energy of the cell comes from. And if energy is compromised, there will be multiple issues as one could imagine. Specifically, they conclude that direct stimulation of cells with near-infrared conditions neurons to resist future damage and accelerate repair of neurons damaged by a previous or continuing insult, in addition to protecting and repairing damaged or dysfunctional neurons. There's emerging evidence from mouse models of traumatic brain injury that near-infrared also stimulates neurogenesis and synaptogenesis, 
Now this is what you're seeing on your screen here with the stimulation of the neurons creating healthy mitochondria and down here where you're seeing neurogenesis new nerves coming back back on track and synaptogenesis where we're getting new connections of nerves this is really quite unheard of in current medical models for Alzheimer's what this means is that not only does near infrared resist and help repair damage but it also appears to help the brain create new nerve cells and new neural connections. Take a second, just take a second to think about what this potentially means. New cells and new connections in the brain is truly deserving of the word frontier in the title of the journal this article has been published in. And finally, they also talk about how these neurodegenerative diseases have been implicated as vascular disorders, which you can see here, with suggestions that the neurodegenerative process begins with the breakdown of the integrity of small cerebral, that means brain vessels, and the blood-brain barrier. Part of the neuroprotective aspect of near-infrared may be from, this is in quotations, repair of the damaged mitochondria in local endothelial cells, leading subsequently to a restoration of the integrity of the endothelial network and blood-brain barrier in the region, resulting ultimately in improved neuronal survival. And that's the key, is the improved brain function and survival. So direct stimulation is what the majority of the research is on, and this direct stimulation seems to have absolutely incredible benefits when it comes to the problems of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. What you're looking at here now is the second way that near-infrared is proposed to work for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and that is this really unique indirect stimulation of the cells by the near-infrared. So the first was the direct stimulation. This is a concept of indirect stimulation and this is a fascinating area of research and directly applies to the use of near-infrared in the saunas that we manufacture and provide. It's exceptionally refreshing to have a scientific journal explore an area that we've known about for years and that is how treatment in one area has an effect on a completely different location in the body. Let's take a look. The authors note that there is increasing evidence that near-infrared treatment might also activate a global systemic response. They also note, however, that while the mechanism remains unknown, it presumably involves the stimulation of one or more circulating molecules or cell types. Possible mechanisms that they mention include stimulation of immune cells, inflammatory mediators, bone marrow derived stem cells, or a signaling system between mitochondria that you can see here, that's referenced here in this, in this illustration. The mechanism may not be completely understood, but the point is that application of near-infrared away from the brain had a positive effect on the brain and other organs, although of course less effective than the direct exposure. So what does all of this mean? Well first of all, a word of disclosure up front. Most of the results, but not all, are still at the proof of concept stage. As the study concludes, and this is in quotation marks, there is much to do in further developing this treatment, but the therapeutic possibilities are many and the potential outcomes very exciting. We await the outcomes of major clinical trials using near-infrared therapy on these patients with much anticipation." End quote. So, these recommendations note that the results are still in this proof of concept stage. So the recommendations that I'm making here are my opinion and not necessarily the opinion of the authors of the paper, just to make that very, very clear. Now let's first talk about direct stimulation. Direct stimulation is still and has to be at your own discretion. The research is still not been done 
as to the length of exposure, the intensity of the exposure. There are factors that the study rec re writes about, and I would highly suggest everyone actually get the study and read it for yourself. But there are some issues with direct exposure as far as how will the near-infrared penetrate through the actual skull. It does penetrate, but it doesn't penetrate particularly deep. So it may have more of a help directly on Alzheimer's than it does on Parkinson's. But you can read the study for more information on that. It is important to note, though, that there are not any longer-term side effects that have been discovered associated with near-infrared in a long-term study that was done. So the point there is that there may be absolutely nothing to lose if the risk is high that you'll be developing Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or that you have it. So waiting for science to catch up has risks. Usually it takes about 10 to 15 years for research to become clinically active. In other words, it takes that long for research to get into the hands of most family doctors that then say, here, you need to do this for Alzheimer's. So direct stimulation is something that, in my opinion, if it was me that had Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, I would be doing. But obviously, for many reasons, including legal and ethical reasons, I certainly can't recommend that that is exactly what you should do based on the current understanding of the research. Indirect use is far more clinically relevant and accepted. We've been using near-infrared therapy for many, many years to some tremendous benefits for conditions that range the full gamut of, of, of really chronic degenerative problems. And what you can see here is how we apply the near-infrared. So near-infrared can be applied in a few different ways we use these near-infrared lamps. And the image on the left is our portable near-infrared sauna. And that's it packaged up ready to ship. So the point is to show you it's very small and compact, doesn't take up a lot of space. The image on the right shows it once it's assembled and it's on a stand so that you simply sit in front of the unit, you expose yourself to the near-infrared on a regular daily basis, and you rotate and you use it like you would in a sauna, um, except it's not a wet sauna, it's a dry sauna. And you will sweat and you will get all the benefits of the sauna in addition to all the benefits of the near-infrared. So the indirect use, I can say, my opinion, is something that we absolutely should be doing if we think that there's an issue with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or if we have it. That's my personal opinion. Now I would like to be able to put together some more studies and start to be able to prove this but with the current information that we have in this current review paper it's important to note this is a review paper it's not one study it's actually reviewing all the studies that have been done on this over the years. So based on that, I would be definitely looking at the indirect use of applying near-infrared to help with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So in conclusion, I hope everyone can appreciate why I've been quite apprehensive and excited to bring this information to people because it's still somewhat controversial. It's still not fully clinically accepted it's more extremely promising than anything else. In my opinion, and again in conclusion, this indirect use of near-infrared is probably a key component that can help so many people, and there may be scenarios where people may choose at their own discretion to apply the near-infrared directly to the cranium and try to help with those scenarios through there. So that's our conclusions. That's our video on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and the review of this wonderful study that has been done.